Revelation chapter 12 is a pivotal and symbolic chapter in the book of Revelation, often interpreted as representing the cosmic struggle between good and evil. Here's a summary of its content. Before we start we'd like to ask for your support. If you enjoy our video please hit the like button this will help us reach more people and create content for you. Now let's get started with today's video Revelation chapter 12. An in-depth exploration Revelation chapter 12 is one of the most symbolically rich and theologically significant chapters in the Bible. It is part of the broader apocalyptic vision given to the Apostle John on the island of Patmos and serves as a critical juncture in the narrative of the book of Revelation. This chapter is often understood as a cosmic drama that portrays the ongoing spiritual conflict between the forces of good and evil, with a particular focus on the role of Israel, the Church, and Jesus Christ in this divine struggle. 1. The Vision of the Woman and the Dragon, Revelation chapter 12 verses 1 to 6, the chapter opens with a vivid and dramatic vision, a great sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet and a crown of twelve stars on her head. She was pregnant and cried out in pain as she was about to give birth. Revelation chapter 12 verses 1 to 2. Niv, this image of the woman is one of the most debated symbols in the book of Revelation. The description of the woman being clothed with the sun suggests a figure of immense significance and glory. The crown of twelve stars is often interpreted as representing the twelve tribes of Israel, which links this woman to the people of God. Some traditions, particularly within Catholicism, have also seen this woman as a representation of Mary, the mother of Jesus, due to her role in giving birth to the male child. However, Many Protestant scholars see the woman as a symbol of Israel or the faithful community, encompassing both the Old and New Testament believers. The woman is described as being in the pains of childbirth, a metaphor that resonates with the prophetic imagery used in the Old Testament to describe Israel in distress or awaiting deliverance. See Isaiah chapter 26 verse 17, Micah chapter 4 verse 10. This imagery suggests that the woman represents the faithful remnant of Israel awaiting the coming of the Messiah. Then another sign appeared in heaven. An enormous red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns on its heads. Its tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to the earth. Revelation chapter 12 verses 3 to 4a. Niv, the appearance of the red dragon introduces the primary antagonist of this chapter in the broader apocalyptic narrative. The dragon is traditionally identified as Satan, the adversary of God and his people. The seven heads and ten horns of the dragon are often interpreted as symbols of immense power and authority, perhaps linked to the oppressive kingdoms and empires of the world that have opposed God's purposes throughout history. The dragon's action of sweeping a third of the stars from the sky is commonly understood as a reference to the fall of a third of the angels, who joined Satan in his rebellion against God. This event is not explicitly detailed in the Bible but has become a central part of Christian tradition regarding the origin of demons and the spiritual battle in the heavenly realms. The dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth, so that it might devour her child the moment he was born. She gave birth to a son, a male child, who will rule all the nations with an iron scepter, and her child was snatched up to God and to his throne. Revelation chapter 12 verse 4b5, Niv, here. The male child is widely recognized as a symbolic representation of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. The reference to ruling the nations with an iron scepter directly alludes to Psalm chapter 2 verse 9, a messianic psalm that speaks of the reign of the Lord's anointed king. The dragon's intent to devour the child upon birth mirrors the satanic opposition to Christ throughout his earthly life, including Herod's attempt to kill the infant Jesus, Matthew chapter 2 verses 13 to 16. The child being snatched up to God and to his throne is interpreted as a reference to Christ's ascension following his resurrection, indicating his victory over death and his exaltation to the right hand of God. This act symbolizes the defeat of Satan's attempts to destroy the Messiah and disrupt God's redemptive plan. The woman fled into the wilderness to a place prepared for her by God, where she might be taken care of for 1260 days. Revelation chapter 12 verse 6. Niv. The woman's flight into the wilderness is a recurring theme in the Bible, often symbolizing a place of divine protection and provision during times of trial or persecution. The 1260 days mentioned here, equivalent to three and a half years, is a symbolic period often associated with a time of tribulation or divine testing. See also Revelation chapter 11 verse 3, Daniel chapter 7 verse 25, and Daniel chapter 12 verse 7. This period represents the time during which God's people are protected from the full onslaught of the dragon's wrath, though they may still face significant trials. 
2. The War in Heaven, Revelation chapter 12 verses 7 to 9. The narrative then shifts to a vision of a cosmic battle in the heavenly realms, then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil or Satan. Who leads the whole world astray? He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. Revelation chapter 12 verses 7 to 9. Niv, this passage describes a celestial conflict between the archangel Michael and the forces of Satan. Michael is often seen as the protector of God's people, a warrior angel who leads the heavenly host in battle against the forces of darkness. The casting down of the dragon and his angels from heaven represents a decisive victory in the spiritual realm. Though the battle continues on earth, the identification of the dragon as that ancient serpent explicitly connects him with the serpent in the Garden of Eden. Linking this vision to the broader biblical narrative of sin, temptation, and the ongoing struggle between good and evil. The phrase, who leads the whole world astray, underscores Satan's role as the deceiver and the corrupting influence in the world. Whose aim is to thwart God's purposes and lead humanity away from the truth. 3. The Song of Triumph and the Dragon's Wrath, Revelation chapter 12 verses 10 to 17, following the dragon's defeat in heaven. A loud voice is heard proclaiming a song of victory. Now have come the salvation and the power in the kingdom of our God, and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters, who accuses them before our God day and night, has been hurled down. They triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Revelation chapter 12 verses 10 to 11. Niv, this proclamation celebrates the triumph of God's kingdom and the authority of Christ over the forces of evil. The accuser of our brothers and sisters refers to Satan's role as the one who accuses believers before God, a theme that echoes the story of Job, Job chapter 1 verses 6 to 12. However, Satan's defeat is assured by the victory of Christ, symbolized by the blood of the Lamb, a reference to Jesus' sacrificial death on the cross. The mention of believers who did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death, highlights the role of martyrdom and faithful witness in the face of persecution. It suggests that the victory over Satan is not only Christ's but also shared by those who remain steadfast in their faith, even unto death. Therefore rejoice, you heavens and you who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury, because he knows that his time is short. Revelation chapter 12 verse 12. Niv, the dual nature of the proclamation, rejoicing in heaven and woe on earth, reflects the ongoing tension between the already not yet aspects of God's kingdom. While the ultimate victory is secure, the battle on earth continues as Satan, knowing his time is limited, intensifies his efforts to oppose God and persecute his people. When the dragon saw that he had been hurled to the earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. The woman was given the two wings of a great eagle, so that she might fly to the place prepared for her in the wilderness, where she would be taken care of for a time, times and half a time, out of the serpent's reach. Revelation chapter 12 verses 13 to 14. Niv, the dragon's pursuit of the woman symbolizes Satan's continued hostility toward the people of God. The two wings of a great eagle given to the woman are reminiscent of Exodus chapter 19 verse 4, where God describes his deliverance of Israel from Egypt as carrying them on eagle's wings. This imagery reinforces the theme of divine protection and deliverance in the face of persecution. The phrase time, times, and half a time is another symbolic reference to a period of tribulation, often interpreted as three and a half years, see also Daniel chapter 7 verse 25. This period represents the time during which God's people are protected from the worst of the dragon's wrath, though they are not entirely free from suffering. Then from his mouth the serpent spewed water like a river, to overtake the woman and sweep her away with the torrent. But the earth helped the woman by opening its mouth and swallowing the river that the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. Please subscribe my YouTube channel I hope you like this video thank you.